I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. We just read about a war between David and Ammon, or Hanun, the king of Ammon, and we will now pick this up. This is First Chronicles chapter 20. Ammonites are overcome. Israel defeats the Philistines. And it came to pass that after the year was expired, at the time that kings go out to battle, Joab led forth the power of the army and wasted the country of the children of Ammon and came and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried at Jerusalem, and Joab smote Rabbah and destroyed it. And David took the crown of their king from off his head and found it to weigh a talent of gold. And there were precious stones in it, and it was set upon David's head, and he brought also exceeding much spoil out of the city. And he brought out the people that were in it, and cut them with saws, and with harrows of iron, and with axes. Even so dealt David with all the cities of the children of Ammon. And David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Hmm. So David, once again, is staying at Jerusalem. Well, uh, well, not once again, but David is starting to hold back. He doesn't participate directly in the fighting as much anymore. When they first went out against Ammon, he sent Joab. Now that they've defeated the Syrians, he stays in Jerusalem, and Joab goes out and destroys the cities. Now it says David took the crown of the king, and David did this, but... Um, it seems that David only went out after Joab had conquered the city, and then he went out to oversee kind of the destruction of the city. That's the impression I'm getting here. And David is starting to act very cruelly here. This just cut them with saws, with harrows, and with axes. This is like a torture. This isn't just killing them in battle. He's... Anyways, verse 4, And it came to pass after this that there arose war at Gezer with the Philistines, at which time Sibekai and Sibekai, the Hushethite, slew Sibekai, that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. And there was war again with the Philistines, and Elhanan, the son of Jer, slew Lam uh, Lamai, the brother of Goliath the Kittite, whose spear staff was like a weaver's beam. And yet again there was war at Gath, where was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot, and he also was the son of the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, <coughs> Shimea <coughs> son of Shimea, David's brother slew him. These were born unto the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Now this is an interesting war with the Philistines. So David's already subdued the Philistines. These appear to be uh, uprisings, rebellions. Each one is led by a member of Goliath's family. Says the son of the giant. Maybe it was the children of Goliath. The more likely the one, well, considering how old David is now, it's probably the children of Goliath, that his children are coming out to kind of avenge their father, you might say. But there's three of them, three different uprisings, all of them led by the children of Goliath, by the by the sons of the giant. The one guy being, uh, one guy's he's got six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot. So, and... They are put down by the armies of Israel. Each one, each of the giants is defeated in single combat by one of David's servants or Jonathan, his his nephew. So, it's an it's an interesting account of some of the uprisings against David that were all put down, and uh, we're just gonna leave it there. I think that's I think there's not much else you can say about this. <laughs>